to subscribe. If you don't subscribe. Hey, welcome back to Little Bugs Bug Corner. And today we're going to talk about our Kenyan sand boas and what we do to care for them, how we set them up, and a couple, just give you guys a couple of pointers on what we do to actually be able to visually see our animals at night when they come out. And just a couple of tips to help few folks out with uh, adult and baby Kenyan sand boats. So here we go, let's get into the video. Okay, we're gonna get started down here with our oldest female sand boa. Her name is Sandra. She is uh, going on three years old now. She's uh, about 300 grams. Uh, we're gonna breed her next year, but down here is her enclosure and it's 24 inches long. Uh, what is that? Uh, I believe it's 12 inches deep. Let me check. Yeah, 12 inches deep and about nine inches tall. Yep, eight inches tall. So 24 by 12 by eight. And the size of female Kenyan Sambo is, is anywhere between 24 and I believe 32 inches. They can get maximum 32, 34 inches long. And uh, for males, it's around 18 to 22 inches for males. So definitely a size difference for the animals. And um, this size enclosure down here is pretty much a perfect size for a full grown female. And as far as temperament, uh, in my opinion, Kenyan Sambo is our perfect beginner snake. Uh, you have to just learn how to just approach them so that if they're asleep, you're not waking them up and they think that you're automatically food. So once you learn how to approach them, it's pretty much a simple task to get your snake out. Uh, Sometimes I have one male that is a little cantankerous and doesn't like to be uh, waking up, but you know, you get past it. I haven't still haven't got bitten by any sambo, so I'm not. It, like I said, it's perfect beginner snake. Okay, now as far as uh, temps in the tank, over here we have our warm side, which uh, let me see. Okay, it's at 87 right now, and the heat in pad is hooked up to this thermostat right here, which you can see is heating. So once this gets to 90, it'll cut off for the uh, heat pad on the bottom. And then as you can see, we have about three to four inches of substrate. And then up top here, we have a stack of rocks over here because up here we have a heat light. And this heat light is keeping the surface temperature at 100. So the surface temperature up here is about 100. 94 as we go across the bore, over here by the water, we're down. 86, 85, 84, 83. So basically we're around low 80s over here on the cool side. And then even over here in the humidity is, oh wait first. And 86 is the, the ambient temp over here with 41% humidity. And then over here, we're at 87.3 on the very bottom and 100 
on top. Okay, and the rocks are almost a hundred. Now that's the important part because at nighttime, when everything is cooling down, the heat pad goes off and the heat light goes off. But these rocks, they stay warm for a long time and you will find your sambo has come out and just bask on those rocks late in the evening. So in my opinion, it is important to have an overhead heating, but at the same time, you're gonna need that little bottom to keep this whole side over here warm. And then over here, as the sand boa burrows down, the temperature is actually cooler. And when I pour my water in the water bowl, I'll over spill it so that there's a little bit of water that will remain in the actual soil underneath it. Uh, actually, it's not damp right now. Okay. But that also helps with the bioactivity of the tank. Okay, and back here in this little moss right here is where I keep everything kind of moist or damp. And we have a few roly polies, isopods, uh, millworms, super worms, and what is it? Uh, earwigs. We have uh, quite a few assortments of bugs. Now, the one thing I do have a problem is keeping succulents alive because the sand boas, as they get larger, they will continuously push up your succulents out of the substrate. And I come in here and I find this knocked up, pushed up or knocked off to the side, but it's a struggle. I try to keep it uh try to keep it them alive but it's been a struggle as far as keeping live plants in here with these guys and then as far as humidity i keep the humidity in between 30 and 50 percent and let me see so like i said we're over here we're at 40 percent right here so what i'll do is i'll spray back here spray a little bit around here just to get that little spot over there then I'll go back here and I'll spray in this back corner where it's warm and under here a little bit so regardless we can be a little bit more humid in the heat or we can come up here where it's dry and hot or we can go back there where it's cool with a little more humidity. Or we can come up in the front where it's less humidity and cool. So just giving the Sambo a couple of options. And like I said, throughout the day, uh, the heat inside the tank will also help dissipate uh, some of the humidity if it spikes too high, but it really doesn't and when the sand boa is in um, When they're in shed I go ahead and make the whole tank about 65% uh, humid and another thing When you just spray like that you see how the dirt on top is wet if you just mix that up a little bit you can see it's back dry again so it's not like it's going all the way down into the actual dirt um, or the bottom of the tank or anything you just want to miss the top kind of light not lightly but you know get it get a cool mist but you don't want to saturate the dirt basically okay so that's how we keep them nice and humid that's how we keep the, the bugs alive in there and I only water the plants like every 
week and a half, two weeks, but as you can see, this guy's struggling, struggling. Now let's go into handling a little bit. Um, as far as the way, what I go through in order to get my sand boa out. I'll take out the water bowl. First, I'll just try to locate to see if I can see her anywhere, which I can. So, let me break across the top of the dirt a little bit. And then, boom, I see her right here. Okay, I see her, and she knows that I have felt her. Now what I'm going to do is, this is her back right here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go on the side of her. And obviously, if she's moving this way, her head is that way. So I'm going to go behind her a little bit. Pick her up gently out of the dirt. Okay, I just put Sandra back in her tank. I wanna cover her up. As you can see, she's back in on the little human side over here. Put a water bowl back in here. She's all good. So, let me see. And up here is where our male king and sand boy is. Let's see his humidity. It's 33% up here. Over on his hot side, he's at 91.5. Bottom and the surface. As far as food and prey size, uh, I stick with pinkies for the first six months. After six months, they move up to fuzzies. One fuzzy a week. One pinky week before that. Then after the year mark, if, if it's a female, I will take her to uh, small hoppers. And for males, I keep them on the fuzzies. And after the year and a half mark, everybody goes to 
uh, fuzzies and the females might get two fuzzies in their feedings depending on how big they are and after the two year mark uh, we move on to small mice and the females will be fed every 10 days and the males every 14 so that's how we do with the with the food and I just prefer to keep them on some form of naturalistic setting uh, the animals seem to do a little bit better and um, I've never had a bad shit in three years uh, I staying on top of keeping the soil moist and, and uh, places for the bugs to actually uh, hide and do their thing. Um, I haven't had any type of bacteria breakouts, uh, nothing, no mites, anything. Everything has been very uh, natural, I should, I should say. And I do go in there and I do uh, check for urates. And whenever I find them, I just take the urates out and keep going. And from time to time, I will put a uh, little bit of vegetables in the corners for the bugs to eat on if the snake uh, has already used the bathroom and then let's say the snake hasn't ate for uh, 10 days or so and in that case I'll throw in some carrots or some lettuce in the corners and the cleanup crew they can sustain off of that until the snake eats again and uses the bathroom so that's how we do for uh, trying to keep our animals more on the naturalistic setting than um, I don't really like aspen. I don't really like uh, just the you know, those walnut shells, cocoa fiber. I, I said, and there is a little cocoa fiber in there, but this is mostly um, topsoil and sand and a uh, little bit of uh, cocoa blocks, a little bit of uh, what is the other one? orchid bark, uh, just pretty much all natural. Try to keep it as natural as possible. But definitely, and as you can see, uh, Sandra is right there in the corner, just checking out, sniffing around, got her head out. She probably thinks it's feeding today because I took her out, but no, not today, lady. But yeah, hope you guys can pick up some cool little tips on you know, things you can do with your samples. Like I said, over light, heat, uh, over light heating is definitely something that is a plus. Um, if you can keep the plants in there, I think next time I'm going to try to keep some of these plants in their actual pots and then weight them down with rocks on top of the pots. And, see if I can do anything like that but if not uh, this works like I said you know put your put your clean up crew in there keep a nice little uh, damp moist spot for them and uh, you can spray like I said under the rocks under the water bowl or whatever and just keep it somewhere so that they can sustain life and things should be good Alright, this is Little Book's dad checking out on the Kenya Sam Boy Care Sheet Husbandry Update. Later.